a tomb. And no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man chain him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying, cutting himself with stones. Sorry, Lindy, just some of my many sordid attributes. I was never 
in all my earthly days. And, Lord, you know this is true. I was never one to cast stones. Lord, help me, but I did not cast stones. Oh, they could chain me up, whip me, tar and feather me, try to blind me. upon the wall. Though they fascinate and enthrall, see, no trace on the wall. I seek here the comfort of shadows, the refuge of shades in this hollow sanctuary. Echoes empty and aimless. The groping spasm of a phantom nameless. There is no firm embrace. There is no open face. Just my many masks daubed in pigments of sham beliefs. Upon a facade of our figments grand conceits. Where shadows rise and shadows fall. And so I lived and at times prospered, always careful to depart any particular locality in good time before the marks of suckers or believers wised up. <laughs> well, I mean to say, timing is everything in my line of work. Now, I was always by nature an incredibly skeptic. It est, I believed in nothing. Well, next to nothing. <laughs> Indeed, I thought I had truly sounded the tenebrous depths of the human heart's ebon abyss. That is, until that night in the town square, that dark, moonless night, with the drums pounding, <laughs> torches burning. The mob baying and howling, hooting and hollering, shouting and screaming, singing their anthem, waving all those flags, 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 flags. And those little savages, they were just standing there, calling together, terrified the little ones. Rattling the chains. A child to get. A child. 
righteous town were originally going to use those stones to cobble their town square. Well, that's right. The chosen people, they was going to rise up out of the muck and mud. Then, shortly after I arrived and began to work my charms, well, they suddenly up and decided they'd be better off using those rocks to help build a big old wall around the place, protect themselves from a, you know, and then things really got out of hand. All oh, that night, I truly came to believe in darkness. Real darkness. So good people! Always remember the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the darkness of this world. <laughs> the Bible also says, the diviner see lying visions, tell false dreams, they comfort in vain. Therefore, the people wander like sheep. <laughs> oh yes, Lord, these people are wandering sheep indeed. <laughs> well, it is essential in my line of work to know the name of the land, the psychological disposition of my audience of the sheep, as it were. <laughs> For indeed, there is a veritable pantheon of reputedly supernatural phenomena. Ghosts, demons, angels, spirits, burning bushes, tongues of fire. Well, the list is endless. <laughs> now, most people believe that there is this whole spirit world going on around us, right here, right here. A reality somehow more substantial than any rock you stub your toe on. <laughs> and herein lies my secret. Only a fool tries to get somebody to believe something they don't already believe. Or want to believe. Now, sir, you combine this predilection to believe with some good old showmanship. And you can get anything. I merely identify the belief and then enhance it. Stoke the flames of a fire that's already lit. Now, I might be using the Bible, or cross, or crystal ball, or old chicken bones. <laughs> it doesn't really matter once you identify the appropriate proclivity. and a dollop of sneers, a spray of cheap sentiment in a fine wispy mist, a pinch of high ideals ground down to a worthless grist, the hairs of the beard of the bare-faced liar, the sordid soot of a dirty look scornful and dire, the sticky drippings of an arse licker's licking. The gum from gullible gimps and all those rich pickings and the itching powder which lingers on their twitching trigger fingers. Then the muck of a rake, the guile of a rogue, a smile that is fake and the praise from a toad and one last ingredient to this most loathsome list. Lashings and lashings are just plain old Meanness squeezed from a really tight fist. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. Ignorance. Pride. Fear. And greed. And just a drop of the truth. That's all. Now, the first thing that struck me as I slid into this frontier town was the preponderance of flags. Why, the citizens of this place had their flags festooned everywhere, and I mean everywhere. 
Not just from the flagpole at the courthouse in the town square, which they was fixing to cobble. They had their flags on every building, on every house, on every porch, on every pillar, every post. Their carriages had flags front and back. The citizens themselves promenading up and down the main street, they was wearing little flags on their lapels, on their belt buckles, on their handbags. Now, observing all this feverish carry-on, do you really need any supernatural gifts to tell what is foremost on their minds? It was patently apparent that these people were very, very concerned, even distraught, about themselves. In other words, they were engrossed to the point of distraction about that most emotive two-letter word there is. Us. Now, it is axiomatic that whenever there is an us, there must be a them. So, who is them? Ah, <laughs> just a few days travel, but yet an entire world away was living the answer. Them was a tribe of savages living right out here, right up in these hills. And these savages, it seems, was making a bit of trouble for the town. And right away, I knew where the magic was going to come from. Yet despite all my years' experience as a fortune teller, I did not foresee how, how I was setting in motion that Dark, dark chain of events.